Hi, I'm Sina, your favorite Vitala, and each episode I talk about, I'll do whatever you say in the comments. And I guess I should continue. And in today's episode, uh, one of you asked me to talk about carnivorous plants. And so I'll be talking about carnivorous plants and specifically those that you can grow yourself at home. And at the same time, we're trying to, uh, you know, figure out how this game works and what we can build and you know, what we need to survive, I guess. Oh, I can see the population up here. We have a lot of villagers. Educated 8%. I mean, with today's education, I guess uh, not being educated is better, but uh, I guess I should... I shouldn't say that. Anyway, so carnivorous plants. Let's build a few more houses while I start talking about them. So let's start off with the first one. That is, I guess, the most easy one to grow. And it's uh, also kind of weed. Wait, I'm not quite sure. I think I, I think I could have built them a bit closer. But yeah, the first kind of carnivorous plant is called Drosera. Uh, is there any English name for it? Let me see. It's like a, a sundew, I think. I think it's sundew uh, or sticky plant as I like to call it. Uh, it's basically a plant that kind of grows tentacles and they, ha they have like hairs on them and each at the end of each hair there's like a tiny drop of glue and this glue is based on sugar and uh, if an insect kind of wants to eat it because you know it's nutritious or I guess I'm not sure how nutritious it has energy at the very least and uh, so it kind of lands on there and then it discovers that it's kind of very sticky and it doesn't uh, appreciate it and can't really escape from there and uh, depending on the Drosera species uh, some of them actually kind of roll up their tentacles so that the the insect is kind of wrapped uh, some just you know just leave the insect struggling and uh, the glue also has the ability to digest the you know unfortunate flies that kind of ended up there and then the nutrients from that you know from that food I guess from that plant food they will end up in the plant and it can grow more tentacles and also produce flowers and flowers in specific uh, is something that a drosera plant is going to do uh, very often and this they have a very special kind of you know I guess flower stalk you can basically it basically grows a very large very long stalk and then there's like for every day there's one tiny flower on it and uh, I think I have one that has like over 50 flowers on it and each of them will kind of open up and close on the same day uh, wait let me just uh, read this a mob you wait words to join your settlement amass a four month supply of food and six houses w what do you mean I mean is there any kind of infrastructure around here or how do they join my village I thought I need to reproduce but you know I'm not sure let's just keep building houses because why not saving the game I guess an auto save uh, not really sure about the resources here what is this firewood is low <laughs> production blocks of a lion will cease to function well not really sure about that, but for now, I guess I have fixed the population. I'm not sure where I can see the wood that I have. Oh, well, I don't have any. So I guess I'll use my H and just harvest the entire area. Not sure if the, if the game cares about nature. Okay, so that should work. So back to the Drosera. Basically, it uh, produces these flowers and each of these flowers is also self-pollinating. So you don't need to pollinate if you, if you don't want to. 
And each of these flowers produces a seed package of maybe a few hundred seeds. And uh, if you have 50 of them, you can imagine how many seeds you get. And the seeds are kind of like tiny specks of dust in black. And, uh, you know, they, if, if there's some slight wind, they kind of blow out. And uh, if you have some kind of, you know, bed uh, where, you know, there's space for the seeds to land, they will basically, you know, grow over everything. And you have lots of tiny sticky plants everywhere, which is kind of cute. Uh, so, yeah, they're kind of easy to grow. If you want to grow them, I would uh, just recommend you actually set up some kind of bed. Uh, just, you know, use some kind of uh, storage container, whatever, that doesn't have any holes at the bottom uh, and then just fill it up with peat and just place the board Drosera in it and then you have a lot of Drosera's in no time I guess. Uh, in terms of light they need uh, depending on the species more or less light but they appreciate light there's plenty of them that grow kind of out in the open uh, with no shadows so the more light you can give them I guess the better they will grow and the more you will get uh, yeah, before we move on to the next one, I want to figure out how I can produce firewood because that seems to be the main issue. So I guess we're going for production, not food production. Oh, actually food production. I think that's more important than firewood. Um, not sure where I didn't have like the resources somewhere. Food, so we still have some. Oh, we had some, so I guess we should get some food. I'm not sure if I can harvest them. Oh, I can harvest them, so gathering is probably. Can I get these? No, I mean, how can I get these? Can we harvest it? I mean, are they already kind of being harvested? Harvested? I'm not sure. But let's just try to get some kind of food production building. Hunter. Not sure if we have any deer around. Forager. Not sure if that... A place of foragers to store food items collected. You're not sure if there's anything... Oh, maybe I can get these greens if I place something close to it. There's some berries. Six people have arrived from the village. They have plans to immigrate. I'm sure they have. <laughs> um, will they accept them or turn away? Well, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if we want to grow that fast. Uh, I'm not sure where the season is. Um, oh, here. So it is late summer. That's not really assuring. So I guess let's just take them in. Hope they don't bring disease or something. Uh, that's a bit far away. Let's try to get medicinal roots. That sounds interesting. Willow bush. I mean, let's assume that the forager thingy works on these greens. Oh, it has a wide radius. Let's just put it here. Like this and uh, we have enough wood now we can build that and then let's hope that we find enough of that and at the same time I guess we should get some firewood resources no resources well I mean do I need to provide drinking water don't see any stat for them but it says firewood so Firewood splitter. So let's just put that up somewhere. It doesn't have a direction. Oh, you cannot place it. Okay, so the radius determines how close you can place into other buildings. And for whatever reason. Oh no, wait a second. You can place it, but people don't want to hear the chopping all the time. So let's just place it somewhere a bit further away where it doesn't bother anyone. Well, I guess let's just place it here. Oh, that was, I guess, you know, the wrong place. Anyway, this house has lost in uh, desirability. 
More people would the way I mean that's a bit too much. I guess I'm not sure if I want to do that. Uh, I hope they kind of can reproduce on their own instead of just like uh, new ones coming. Okay, but on to the next plant. Uh, it is the Nepenthes, a pitcher plant. It uh, grows these kind of cup-like thingies um, that contain some uh, juice, some digestive juice. And they have very, very slick, very smooth and slippery uh, walls. And if an insect kind of comes in, alert by the sugar uh, rich whatever, you know, some, something that they want to eat. Uh, they kind of, you know, sit there and kind of chew away or I guess, I guess drink away. I'm not sure how that works. I'm not an insect. Uh, anyway, so they try to eat the sugary whatever. And, uh, you know, if they kind of don't watch their footing, they will fall into it. And since everything's so slippery, they cannot get out and they kind of land in a digestive juice pool uh, along with the other half digested insect and that's where they will spend the rest of their life uh, very appealing I know um, but that's a pitcher plant it looks very kind of tropical uh, and it looks very exciting uh, unless of course you lived somewhere where these grow in nature then they look normal I guess is that like thunder I guess it is I hope it doesn't burn something down Firewood is low. Food stocks are low. There's a lot of things that are low. Except my happiness. I'm pretty sure I will change if they don't have any uh, food. Why are the food like, isn't that plenty? Like, I'm not sure. I mean, forager. The forager is doing stuff, so. I guess more food is better, but I'm not sure if it can spoil. Is there any way I can check? Is there any... It can spoil, but these are root vegetables, so they're probably okay for some time. Let's just leave it, or I guess five foot is low. We have one, I mean that should be enough, right? I guess we need more wood. The question is, can we get more wood? Like, I mean, do these green trees grow over time? I hope they do. Because otherwise I, I see myself having issues with wood. But anyway, I guess let's just... Okay, we can't build anything else. What is this? Fishing, that's actually a pretty good idea. Let's go and get some fishing. I cannot place it. Oh, okay, so there's plenty of options. <clears throat> so I just place it here. And that should do the trick. I hope. We're kind of lacking wood again. So let's just harvest some. It's still marked for harvesting. But let's take these as well. So, the pitcher plant, uh, they need... Uh, it depends on where you get them from or where they are from nature. Some grow kind of in the forest and don't need a lot of light. Some grow out in the field. Uh, so it depends on the species. Uh, they pretty much look, you know, pretty similar. There are some that have like longer pitchers, some have wider pitchers. There's uh, some that, that's called like Bloody Mary uh, that is that has like, you know, deep red pitches. Um, yeah, you can... Uh, I haven't tried putting them just in like a... In, gym, in some kind of pool of water, but it's advised to... It's advised to put them like in a pot and not kind of, you know, let it sit in water. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you can look up whatever you want, uh, whatever kind of care instructions you want. But that's pretty much the second type of carnivorous plant. And I guess um, uh, there is one plant, which I'm not quite sure how this, how, what the actual name is. It kind of is like a pitcher plant as well, but 
it kind of instead of growing the pictures from from the leaves it kind of just straight grows pictures from the ground um, and they are basically just working in the exact same way it's uh, basically you know you know they kind of get the insects get attracted by some kind of you know prospect of energy and then they fall in and can't get out because of slippery stuff these just grow out from the bottom kind of get more wide as they get taller and yeah these typically are oh wait a second what was that i think i just um some of the world just got attacked oh i can actually do they have a name they do have a name splitting firewood how how does the profession by the way work because i didn't really sign anything it seems like it automatically does that sort of so let's just not worry about it okay impending blizzard wait it's not even winter yet i'm not sure what i can do to stop this it seems like they are running for their lives wait in oh i thought the blizzard would come once this bar is finished but the food stocks are low um Resources in storage? Didn't I just? I mean, yeah, they are low, I guess. Let's get a new food production building. A crop field. I mean, it's winter, kind, kind of a bad uh, timing. Smokehouse. Meat and fish. Oh, I guess that's good. We do have fish. So let's just try that. Okay, so the closer I move them to buildings, the less uh, oh, I'm used to pressing R to turn them. And this one, I'm not sure why it's so des undesirable for this one, but it's kind of only 2% for this one. But I'll just place, wait, I don't really get it. Desirable A? Oh, it, oh, okay, I'm not sure if it's like very desirable. Anyway, let's just put it here and let's just put some pathway. Not sure where exactly. The star looks very cool. How is it made though? Oh, I see. Okay, they basically have a particle emitter uh, on the camera and that's why it kind of is delayed a bit. So, uh, roads. I guess let's go from. Not quite sure where the. Well, the road is placed already. Well, let's just try that. So they are no longer working, I guess. I guess because it's a blizzard. And, but yeah, let's move on to the next, which is uh, also not sure how it's called actually, but it's a small, it's a very small plant that kind of grows underground and it traps uh, tiny. I guess, I'm not sure if they're aquatic insects, but it traps kind of, kind of tiny microorganisms in some kind of bubble traps. And they typically only, like this plant typically only shows as some tiny, like maybe five to 10 centimeter high flowers. Very thin stalk and very, very tiny flowers. Uh, I should, I should, uh, you know, think about the name. Um, Ah, uh, I, I, I just had it. I just had it, I think. But I guess I'll just, I'll just put the names into the description then. So that you can look them up. Um, because otherwise, I guess it would be kind of difficult to go with just my description. But yeah, these typically are grown like outside. So just put them in some kind of container that doesn't have a hole at the bottom. Uh, and then just fill up with peat put these plants in and then the rainwater will basically flood everything which uh, you know they can easily tolerate then that's I guess the natural environment and let me think if there's another we have the sticky plants we have the pitchers we have 
the, the one that I don't know any name and I think there's one that I still there's one that has like that grows like I think it's butterwort or something uh, has like some sticky leaves uh, like with some very soft looking sticky leaves they're kind of like I guess buttery <laughs> um, I also put the name in the description it just it just grows leaves pretty much and then a flower stalk uh, in the middle at some point and you know the flower looks kind of I think it looks kind of similar to the Drosera ones but bigger and uh, typically I would say the, they need a lot of light especially in winter mine is kind of a bit has shrunk a bit during winter but yeah that's pretty much it uh, for Cardamore's plants it's also 20 minutes already into the episode and now uh, that it's winter I will pause this and I will cut the episode so bye